Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It podcast. I am your host, Apostle Rosemary of RCN Ministries and OSGA Apostolic Network, along with my wonderful husband, Apostle Herbie. Today we'll be doing week two of restoration and our topic on today is God's restoration. We will be coming to you today with scripture um, coming from the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 25. And this is the Amplified um, Translation. We're dealing with a new and a living way. And it reads, Therefore, believers, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place, the place where God dwells, by means of the blood of Jesus. 20 says, By this new and living way, which we initiated the opening for us through the veil as the holy of holies, that is through his flesh, 21 says, and since we have a great and wonderful priest who rules over the house of God, 22 says, let us approach God with a true and sincere heart and unqualified assurance of faith. Having had our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, our bodies wash with pure water. 23 says, let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. 24 says, and let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds. 25 says, not forsaking our meeting together as believers to worship and instruct as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. I want to, I want to touch on something here. We're going to say to you this morning that verse 23 is the key verse. Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. The word of God will not go out void. If God said it, it shall come to pass. If God said it, it will manifest. If God said it, it's going to come into fruition. So I want you all to challenge yourself today and begin to look back at what God said. And then just begin to talk to yourself and begin to minister to yourself. As a matter of fact, prophesy to yourself and say a declaration that without a shadow of a doubt, if God said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. My God. Amen. I've come to tell you, Apostle Herbie and I, that God is a healer. The Bible shows us over and over that our God is a God of restoration. He has been in the business of restoration all the way back since Adam and Eve um, brought sin into the world. Not only can the God that we serve, the one true living God, not only can God restore, but he promises that he would, my Lord. God's promises of restoration to the Jews coming out of captivity. Apostle Herbie. My people will receive a double portion, and so they will inherit a double portion in their land, an everlasting joy in their heart. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7. And the NIV. Locusts had ruined years of crop, and, and the farmers were desperate. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 and 26 in the New King James Version, he promised the restoration of the nation of Israel. God's restoration through Christ. In John chapter 16 and verse 33 in the NIV translation, and it reads, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The Lord wants us to know that no matter what it looks like, no matter what we have to endure, no matter what we're going through in this season, he wants us to know that we are overcomers. Why? Because he has already overcome this world. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Romans 5 and 1. We have an abundant life in Christ. He also reminds us of the abundant nature of his restoration. According to John chapter 10 and verse 10, this is the ESV translation. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. My God. The word Jesus used for abundantly meant over and above. More than is necessary and supreme. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water does not fail. According to Isaiah 58 and 11 in the ESV. God restores my soul according to Psalms 23 verses 1 through 3 in the NIV. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. God can restore what is broken. He loves us like no other. So cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. According to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 in the NIV. Spiritual restoration. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the garments of praise instead of despair, according to Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1 to 3 in the NIV. The Lord has promised to give us beauty from ashes and praise instead of despair. So fret not men and women of God, for God shall restore unto you the years that the palmer worm, the canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar had eaten up. My God. We need to look and understand this, people of God, that we um, need to be able to understand the ways to restore our lives. First of all, you do one thing first. You write the vision. According to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 in the Amplified Version, and Apostle Herbie has it right now to read. I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the tower, and I will keep watch to see what he will say to me, and what, shall, and what answer I will give as his spokesman when I am approved or reproved to say, then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plenty on clay tablets, so that the one who reads it will run. For the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries towards the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. Even though it delay, wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. Listen, we've come to tell you that one of the first principles in restoration is it starts with a vision. Ah, uh, we perish without a vision. Mm -hmm. And when we read Habakkuk chapter two, we understand that we have to write the vision that God has given us mm -hmm. and we have to make it plain. How can we ask God to restore what we don't even have a vision for? 
We have to have the vision to be able to write it upon the tablets and to make it plain so that when we read it, the person that reads it is able to run with it. So how can someone restore something if you don't even know what it is you need God to restore? Ask yourselves, what is it that you are excited about that you need God to do? Or something that you're looking forward to in your near future? Your vision teaches you discipline. It guides your steps and it makes your priorities more organized. Begin to imagine yourself not having something to look forward for to in the future. Where would you be or what would you think you'll be at? And what would you think you'd be doing? You can lose stuff and recover them, but not without vision because without it, we cast off restraint, my God. If you don't want to waste time on unimportant things, have a vision. And even if it takes a long time to fulfill that very vision, don't give up on it. Huh. Don't give up on it in the in-between time. Don't give up on it in the hard times. Don't give up on it in the times of waiting. But nevertheless, hold fast to that vision. Hold fast to what God has shown you. Believe in what he has shown you. Imagine the greater things God has for you in your hour that he will restore all things back into your life. Be patient. Be patient waiting on your restoration for your life. Be passionate about it. Uh, be optimistic about it. Don't lose sight when the road gets rocky. Don't lose sight, but grab a hold of your passion and pursue God and pursue your vision. Don't forget to do the things that you love. You become pessimistic about things and get easily discouraged by simple failures. But fret not, man and woman of God. Just know that as long as you have a vision and as long as you pursue God, it shall manifest. God shall bring the restoration into manifestation and fruition. You've got to stay focused in this season. Having your focus helps you to restore your life. You can accomplish much if you stay focused in your life. But if you allow yourself to get distracted, if you allow yourself to begin to refrain from being concerned about everybody else uh, to the point that you no longer have time to tarry or to seek God concerning your vision, then guess what? You've lost sight of your vision and it cannot come to pass. You've delayed your restoration, my God. Believe in the dreams and the vision that God has given you. Believe in your goals. Be consistent and believe that God had given you this vision. He had given you this dream and it shall come back and he shall restore it back unto you. Stand in God while you stand on God and stand in faith. Don't forget your first love. Restoring life might not be that easy, but with God, nothing is impossible. Whatever is in your heart never left your first love. That is Jesus who died on the cross for you and I out of love. We have to put God first in everything that you do and in anything that you do. Begin to remind yourselves of the wonderful things that Christ Jesus did when he laid down his life and ransomed his soul to redeem all of mankind. Six. Be productive and fruitful. One key, one key to restore life is to be productive and fruitful. There are many opportunities in front of you. You only fail to recognize them because you are too focused on other people's harvest. Always remember that being fruitful means being patient. You might not yet see the fruit of your labor, but understand that you have a different season. So don't compare the harvest time to your sowing. Mm. 
have faith because faithful people tend to be more successful. Have a spiritual sharpness. A person with spiritual sharpness is not making excuses. So stop hiding in your insecurities. Stop hiding in your cage. Stop being a coward. Instead, pray that God will bring alignment back in your life. Pray for a sovereign more, a move of God. Know that He can restore and bring a full recovery in life. What He needs is only your full cooperation. If you, if you are that eager to restore your life, position yourself in the right place. Make God the center of your life, for He is the source of blessing and the source of all kinds of breakthrough. By His side, you will experience a full recovery. By His side, you will experience a full restoration mm. of all things. Mm. The things that you think you've lost, the things that have been delayed, the things that have been hindered, and the things that the enemy thought that he had annihilated in your life yes, shall come into fruition. But I want to touch on something here that Apostle Herbie was reading here. Um, pray for a sovereign move of God. Know that he can restore and bring a full recovery in your life. Mm -hmm. What he needs is only your full cooperation. Yes. Uh, we need to understand something. This last one is key. If you're that eager to restore your life, I want y'all to catch this in the realm of the spirit. Position yourselves oh, no. in the right place. Yes. I'm going to say that one more time. Position yourselves in in the right place. Mm -hmm. See, many of you can't come into a full restoration from God because you're not in position. Come on you haven't positioned yourselves in the right place. You're out of position. You're out of an alignment. You're out of your assignment. You're out of your mandate. My God. God cannot bless you in your mess. So position yourselves in the right place, said the Lord thy God. We thank you all for joining us this morning on Let's Talk About It podcast. Yes, yes. Apostle Herbie and I pray that you all have been blessed on this message on today that the Lord has given us to minister to you with here on our podcast on God's restoration. May God bless you and may God keep you until next Wednesday. And if you haven't yet, follow our um, podcast um, you can go to our website, rcnministries.com. It'll take you there, um, the, the podcaster there. Um, you can also Google us. We're all over Google. Um, you can also look for us and follow us. Make sure you follow our podcast. Follow us on every, on every platform. I'm talking Apple, Spotify, Google, um, Amazon Music, I think it is. Wherever it is, just follow us and just be a part of what God is doing. Um, just follow us on our websites um, and make sure you go and subscribe. Um, hit the notification bells for our YouTube channel, which is RCN Ministries Global TV, as well as Apostle Rosemary, RCN Ministries and OSGA. Those are, are both our um, YouTube channels. Make sure you go there. Make sure you subscribe. We're there live every Sunday at 10 a.m., um, we're looking to do some more things on there as well. Um, and we may even um, do our podcast live um, on our YouTube. We will let you all know when we do that. Um, but keep us in prayer because we're launching some other things right now behind the scene. And um, as Joseph, we learn to keep it hidden while it grows. My God. Apostle Herbie, is there anything you want to add? Nothing? Just go ahead and like it too. Hit the like button yes. also. Oh, yes. Hit the like button also on our on our YouTube channels. Thank you. So subscribe to our two YouTube channels. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Like our videos. Comment on our videos. Share, share, share. And be a blessing to us as well. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you. May God keep you. And have a great rest of your morning and afternoon. God bless.